It's the start of a new year, so as usual, here's my obligatory upcoming MMOs video where I talk about all the games that could release in 2024, but realistically will be perpetually pushed back until all the hype for the game has been bled dry. Whilst 2023 was a decent year for new MMORPG announcements, we didn't exactly have a whole lot of releases. Surely 2024 will be better, right? Keep in mind some of the games mentioned in this video will never actually come out, and the ones that do will likely disappoint you, so keep your expectations low and your hopes high as we go through the list. As per usual, the list is organised in order of the MMOs that I'm the most optimistic about to the ones I'm least optimistic about. But first, today's sponsor, Marvel Strike Force, the ultimate mobile squad RPG. Join forces with your favourite superheroes and supervillains in an epic battle to save the universe from the clutches of evil. In Marvel Strike Force you assemble a dream team of iconic characters from across the multiverse. Whether you're a fan of Iron Man, Wolverine, Venom or more, you'll find your favourites in this game. If you're a new player you can unlock up to 17 total characters within the first 30 days, including Spider-Man, Deadpool, Thor, Captain America and many more favourites. Power up your squad to take on missions, unlock gear and conquer PvP modes like Alliance War and Real Time Arena but the excitement doesn't stop there. New characters are constantly joining the fray, including the recently unveiled Hive Mind team. Keep an eye out for the symbiote versions of Silver Surfer and Ghost Spider, perfect for pairing with Venom and Carnage for maximum synergy. Plus, don't miss out on February's month-long event featuring the debut of the formidable Red Goblin. Don't miss out on the action, download Marvel Strike Force now using my link in the description, and you'll unlock exclusive characters for free by logging in. Moreover, for a limited time, redeem promo code VENOMGIFT to unlock 100 Venom Shards, 500 Power Cores and 5 Premium Orbs for free. So what are you waiting for? Install the game today and unleash the hero within. Ashes of Creation In 2023, Ashes has made amazing progress and over the past few months of development update livestreams has shown multiple core systems working. From the caravan system to crafting, player housing, world boss fights, the event system, and most recently a big improvement to the game's combat with the new Ranger class gameplay update. Ashes is a sand park MMO catering to both PvP and PvE players and has a lot of people hyped for it including myself due to its fair business model, going with the good old sub fee no box cost and cosmetic only cash shop approach with zero pay to win. Overall Ashes stands out as one of the most ambitious MMORPGs on the horizon with Alpha 2 confirmed for Q3 2024. As for a full release date I'd have to speculate late 2025 or even 2026 but it's really hard to tell. For those of you keen on keeping up with Ashes of Creation's progress, then check out my Ashes of Creation coverage playlist, in which I recap all of the game's development update livestreams in a concise format. Pax Day is an upcoming social sandbox MMORPG set in a vast fantasy world inspired by medieval legends. Embracing a cloud-native MMO concept, the game allows players to seamlessly play on any screen or device. In terms of gameplay, the thing that sticks out for me the most with Pax Day is its player-created settlements. The building in this game looks absolutely insane and is likely to be best in genre in this aspect. Pax Day basically seems like it'll be a medieval EVE Online with a big focus on resource gathering, crafting, exploration, and a mix of both PvP and PvE. The recent alpha demonstrated promising progress. Unfortunately, I didn't get invited to the playtest, hence why I didn't cover it on my channel when every other content creator did. Early access for Pax Day is confirmed for Spring 2024, with no date for the full release yet. The Riot MMO. Contrary to what the clickbait titles flooding YouTube would have you believe, we still have almost no information available about the upcoming Riot MMO. The main reason there's so much hype behind this game is due to Riot Games' amazing track record of having every game they've released turn out to be very successful, as well as appeal to a broad audience. With their resources and knack for making high quality polished games, I think it's fair to say that the Riot MMO has the 
the potential to be one of the biggest MMORPGs since World of Warcraft, possibly setting new standards for what it means to be an MMORPG in this day and age, where the genre is mostly filled by nostalgic and franchised players. The only news we had this year was that Ghostcrawler, the executive producer of the game, left the company earlier in the year because of personal matters and started a new MMORPG studio, which brings us on to the next game. After leaving Riot Games, Ghostcrawler created Fantastic Pixel Castle Studio and started the development of a game with the codename Ghost, after receiving a sizeable investment from NetEase. The game is still in the very early stages of development, but according to Ghostcrawler they want to bring back central pillars of the MMO experience, such as playing with friends and building a community, as MMOs have moved too far towards solo adventuring. One of the peculiarities of Ghost will be its shards system, where the player will alternate between private realms, called blue shards, which will have a similar experience to games such as V Rising, and public red shards which will have a more traditional MMORPG experience. Work on Ghost has just started, but Ghostcrawler mentioned in an interview with Canon that the development of the game is moving really fast, and that he doesn't want to be working on the game 10 years from now. I'll be real with you, I don't think we'll see this game before 2028, but at least we know where to put all of our cope if Ashes of Creation and the Riot MMO crash and burn. Chrono Odyssey is a Korean open world MMORPG made in Unreal Engine 5 that will be available on both PC and console. This game looks absolutely stunning, and the recent gameplay trailer is quite promising. It includes classic fantasy RPG classes such as Archer, Warrior, Berserker and Mage, but it also introduces guns, hammers and, as the game's name implies, various time-bending abilities. Chrono Odyssey kind of gives me BDO vibes with its graphics, epic looking combat and giant monsters, but beyond that the details are scarce. The most optimistic expectation would be a release in late 2024, but realistically probably 2025 and beyond. Throne and Liberty recently released in Korea in December 2023 and is scheduled for a 2024 release in the West, published by Amazon Game Studios. Before the official release, the game underwent a significant combat revamp in response to negative feedback from the closed beta tests. The updated version of the game no longer includes autoplay, features a more dynamic combat system, and takes a more traditional approach to MMO features. It's basically like a modern version of Lineage 2. To the surprise of absolutely no one, the game is obviously pay to win, and will likely see a western release in the first half of 2024 on PC, followed by a console release in the near future on both Xbox and PS5. Check out my latest video if you want to see my first impressions on the game, and what you can expect for the western release. Path of Exile 2. Not really an MMORPG, but I know all my MMO friends will be playing this game as soon as it comes out. Path of Exile 2 is a free-to-play next-gen ARPG that promises to outdo its very successful prequel, as well as offer a much more in-depth gameplay experience to competitor Diablo 4 which released in 2023. Earlier in the year, Grinding Gear Games released a new gameplay trailer for PoE 2, and an announcement for the first closed beta which begins June 7th, 2024. Even though this isn't an MMO, definitely keep an eye out for this one as I'm sure you'll like it. Arcage 2 is not the name for the next fresh start server of Arcage, but the sequel itself to the acclaimed yet controversial MMORPG. Arcage 2 takes a bold new direction from its predecessor by moving away from large scale faction based PvP. This shift apparently reflects the Western market's preference for action packed single player console games. The primary focus for progression in Arcage 2 will now be on single player content, while still trying to maintain the core elements that Arcage was known for, such as trading and sea combat. Kakao Games is apparently looking at Gamescom 2024 for a gameplay reveal of Arcage 2, so I think we can assume a 2025 release for this one. Regardless, this is another Unreal Engine 5 MMO that I'll personally be very excited in trying out. 
Perfect New World is a game made in Unity that was announced out of the blue nine months ago and seems to be pretty far ahead in its development cycle. Judging from the trailers and various beta footage, Perfect New World has a hybrid combat system with animation lock, features four different gender locked classes and has a mix of PvP and PvE content. The general feedback I saw from this game's playable tests were somewhat mixed, but the game does look really nice visually and it's still in development so there's time to improve. Improve. I'd expect a full release for this one sometime in 2024. Core Punk is quite a unique MMORPG as it tries to bridge the gap between MOBA and MMO, with top-down gameplay and Fog of War, which serves as a way to incentivize exploration in the open world. Besides the MOBA-like combat system, you still have your classic MMORPG systems like gathering, crafting quests, randomly generated dungeons, and raids. The game had a beta test fairly recently, and fortunately I didn't have time to play it, but next beta test I'll jump in and make a first impressions video. Video. So far, Core Punk is looking highly likely to release sometime in 2024. Do you like Warframe but wish it had slower, more deliberate gameplay and was set in a more grounded fantasy world? Well, good news, Soulframe is being developed by Digital Extremes and will be a parallel game to Warframe, offering similar gameplay features but with a different aesthetic and theme. There's no date for this one but the devs are releasing development updates and it seems like a release date is slated for late 2024. With its crowdfunding of over $500 million, Star Citizen is the most ambitious game ever, and whilst after a decade in development we still have no full release date, we did finally get an incredible gameplay trailer for Squadron 42, the single player campaign version of Star Citizen earlier in 2023. Star Citizen has been playable in a testing state for a few years and does have a dedicated community, some of which make epic videos about all of the latest updates. For many though, the game has been in development for so long that they've just tuned out. One thing's for certain though, if Star Citizen ever does release, it will probably be the best sci-fi MMO ever created. As for an estimated release date, I have no idea. Terrace Land is a cross-platform PC mobile MMORPG made by Tencent. Nope. And that's usually where I would lose interest immediately. But after looking into this game, I think it could actually be a very interesting project, although towards the end of 2023, it did have a bit of controversy. From the get-go, the game assured players that it would be a zero pay-to-win MMO, but during the CBT, it had a number of systems where players could basically buy power in a similar way to games like Lost Ark and World of Warcraft. Weirdly, the devs also removed mentions of non-pay-to-win from their marketing and description of the game during this time. However, since then, following backlash from the player base, they've now seemingly gone back to their non-pay-to-win vision, stating in a recent dev update that the pay-to-win stuff wouldn't be a thing for the full release, it was just for the CBT. Make of that what you will. Aside from that, the game will have a seamless open world and a traditional tab target combat system, as well as being accessible on a global server for both PC and mobile platforms. On top of that, the devs recently removed the game's gender lock after receiving feedback from a closed beta, which I think is very unusual for Eastern devs, but will likely be appreciated by most players. As for features, it looks like they're going for a classic themed WoW inspired MMO with raids, multiple classes and builds, and a vast open world. As for the release date, Taurus Land will launch in Q1 2024. The Quinfall is an upcoming MMORPG that makes the ambitious claim to bring us the largest open world we have ever seen. In Quinfall, your class will be decided by the combination of weapons you equip. You'll be able to have your own shop in the world, play mini games and board games in taverns with other players, explore secret dungeons filled with puzzles, gather, craft, fish, and pretty much do everything your heart desires. This is a big promise and it's possible that Quinfall is attempting too much, which doesn't always turn out too well. The game's release was set to be on January 20th, 2024 according to their Steam page, but the sneaky devs changed it very recently to coming soon, instead launching a closed beta test on January 30th instead. I've not had the chance to play the beta personally, and I'm extremely skeptical that this dev team has managed to pull off such an ambitious project in such a short space of time, but based on some of the footage I've seen of the game on YouTube, the Quinfall does seem to be somewhat playable, so 
though it's already surpassed my expectations because I genuinely thought it was a scam. Whether it's a good game or not, I'll let you know in a first impressions video soon when I get to play it. Blue Protocol is an upcoming free-to-play anime MMORPG that was released this year in Japan and is set to release in the West in 2024, published by AGS. The game had a bit of a bumpy release in Japan, but I can see that the game could be fairly successful in the West, as the game will be somewhat similar to Genshin, but with more MMO elements. As for an actual Western release date, I think we could expect Q3 2024, perhaps with some beta tests before that. Dune Awakening is an open world survival MMO set in the Dune universe and developed by Funcom, the creators of Conan Exiles. Like many survival games, Dune Awakening will include elements such as gathering, exploring and hunting, however it places extra emphasis on the social interaction among players in a persistent world. The game recently announced the first beta test, and you can sign up for it on the official website. The devs mentioned that the game is at a stage where player feedback would be valuable. I anticipate a release in 2024 for this one, potentially around Q4. Project LLL represents NCSoft's venture into third-person MMO shooters, unfolding in an alternate reality soul, intricately recreated as a 3D map, drawing inspiration from Philip K. Dick's novels. The game offers a fully explorable open world, dynamic events, and the inclusion of mechs. Development appears to be well underway, with a probable release in 2024 on both PC and console. Profane presents itself as an authentic, player-driven sandbox MMO set in a traditional fantasy environment. You can explore a dynamic world that responds to your actions, engage in open-world PvP, construct houses, and experience skill-based action combat. Profane had multiple tests in 2023, and presented a playable version of the game at this year's Brazil Game Show. Based on the progress shown so far, I think the game will be released in either late 2024 or 2025. Past Fate is a Viking-themed open-world indie MMORPG where players can choose from five distinct classes – Warrior, Necromancer, Mage, Pirate, and Priest. The game has fairly nice graphics and adopts a Souls-style action combat system. It features a crafting and gathering system, quests, and various monsters such as zombies, demons, and giants, and has been receiving small but steady improvements with it likely to enter Early Access on Steam in 2024. Doki V is a creature-collecting open-world MMO developed and published by Pearl Abyss. This game was initially revealed in 2019, and the development has been somewhat quiet since 2021 where we got a pretty exciting gameplay trailer. This game is supposed to bridge the gap between young and old MMO players, and has a much more casual tone when compared to other games from Pearl Abyss. The release date for Doki V hasn't been announced yet, but seeing how Crimson Desert was pushed to 2025, I wouldn't hold my breath for this one. Maybe late 2024 if we're lucky, otherwise this is a 2025 or beyond release. Plan 8. Similar to Project LLL, Plan 8 is an MMO shooter made by Pearl Abyss. This game was announced in 2019 and PA has been radio silent ever since. Considering Crimson Desert was delayed for 5 years and tuned down from an MMORPG to a single player game, I can't promise you that this game will ever come out, and if it does it might be a rhythm game for all we know, so don't expect this before 2026. Eternal Tombs, formerly called War of Dragnarox, Eternal Tombs is an indie MMORPG that recently went through some major changes. After transitioning to Unreal Engine 5, the game will now be run by live staff, called Tomb Masters, who will shape the experience of players by running events and changing the in-game world. Eternal Tombs will allow you to run your own shop, craft unique items, partake in castle sieges, and much more. The game will also not have a cash shop, and promises that all items will have to be earned through gameplay. Eternal Tombs has some really unique ideas, and I'm interested to see if an MMO run by GMs can actually work. That being said, I don't think we'll get to play it before 2025.
Ashfall is a post-apocalyptic MMORPG shooter developed by Legendary Star Studio, and will offer nine distinct shooting styles that come from a mix of your abilities and weapons. The expansive world in this game spans over 200 kilometers, featuring diverse environments such as small camps, toxic wastelands, and sprawling cities. The release date for this game is confirmed for Q3 2024, although personally, I don't think this game looks very good. Into the Echo is an Unreal Engine 5 MMORPG that describes itself as a massively multiplayer time travel tale. The game aims to break free from traditional MMORPG conventions like linear progression or levels. Apparently the game strives to create an inclusive environment where everyone can play together and have a meaningful impact, regardless of the hours they've invested. Whilst this game might not cater to hardcore players, it's likely to appeal to a more casual audience, especially those looking for a game to enjoy with their partner. There's no gameplay out for this one yet though, so I'm assuming this is a 2025 or beyond release. Pioneers of New Dawn. Details about this MMO are still scarce, but it appears to prioritise building and sustaining persistent settlements in a challenging environment. With its abundance of natural themes and survival elements, the game sets itself apart from your typical MMO, potentially filling a unique niche in the market. Since there's no trailer or footage available yet, I believe this to be another one to add to the 2025 or beyond release list. Playable Worlds is, unlike its name would have you believe, not playable. In fact, it's in the very early stages of development. There's almost no information about this game yet, but it's being developed by Ralph Costa, the lead designer and director of games like Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies, so we can only expect great things from this one. Plainly speaking, there's not much to talk about with Playable Worlds yet, and it will likely be unplayable until the end of the decade. City of Titans. If you were a fan of the now closed City of Heroes, you might want to check out City of Titans, an Unreal Engine 5 MMORPG that brands itself as the spiritual successor to City of Heroes. This indie Kickstarter project has raised $800,000, and after a period of limited communication, the studio has finally unveiled a playable version of the game, exclusive to backers featuring some basic features. The potential release is expected in 2025. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. If we travelled back in time 20 years and I showed someone the latest footage released for this game, they'd still say it looks outdated. But don't worry, if you're in your 20s you might not live long enough to see the release of this game. And if you was ever excited for Pantheon in the past, odds are the recent graphics overhaul and baffling decision to make an EverQuest successor have a children's game art style has likely killed all your hype. I personally do not believe Pantheon will ever release. Camelot Unchained has been a hot mess for quite some time now, and it's honestly a shame to even include it in an upcoming MMORPG list video. At this point it's become very clear that this game will never be released, and the studio behind it is just working on an engine to sell to other developers. What's mind-blowing is that even after being in development for more than a decade, and still figuring out the very basics of the game, the studio has recently received an additional $15 million in funding from investors. Unbelievable. But that's it for this video. As I said, I think 2023 was a great year for new MMO announcements, and I'm excited for the new wave of upcoming Unreal 5 games that will hopefully bring a breath of fresh air into the genre. Which MMOs are you most looking forward to on this list? Which ones do you believe will not make it to a full release? Let me know in the comments below and also help us out with a like for the algorithm gods, and to pray that 2024 gives us some much needed new MMO dopamine spikes. Social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.